before applying a heat or cold treatment to a patient, it is important that they are made aware of all the contraindications and precautions. These are all listed on the slide. Prior to hot and cold treatments, tests need to be done to test if the patient has thermal sensitivities to differentiate between hot and cold. These tests need to be done prior to the first treatment and any other treatments where the patient has made that changes. So the test will involve hot and cold test tubes, or spoon and a tube, uh, a blunt and a sharp test, and an ice reaction test. The first is the hot and cold test. So you'll tell the patient what's cold and what's hot, give them a test, so this is cold and this is hot. So once they know the difference, you can go and tell them to look away, just look away please. And you'll start going and I'll check it's hot or cold. Cold. Hot. Hot. Cold. Now we'll do the sharp and blunt test. So you'll, once again, that's sharp, that's blunt. Okay, so the patient will look away. Sharp. Blunt. You'll do that a couple times. Now for the ice reaction test. So you do that, rubbing ice, 30 seconds on their skin to see if there's any adverse reaction. So you do that for 30 seconds and then observe the site. When providing patient with a heat or cold treatment, you must gain their consent. When having a heat pack, all you should feel is a mild, comfortable warmth. If you feel any more than this, or if the heat concentrates in any particular spot or it starts to feel uncomfortable, you must call me immediately. Otherwise, you may be in danger of being burnt. If in doubt, call me. Please do not move or touch any of the equipment during treatment. If you become uncomfortable, call me. Do you understand what I've said? Yeah. Do you have any questions? No. Do I have your consent to proceed? Yeah. Wonderful, we can proceed. The same will be said for ice. Heat uh, it requires precautions as it can be destructive due to serious tissue damage occurring at over 45 degrees. So the ideal range for these heat packs are 40 to 45 degrees. So you should never allow a patient to lie on top of a hot pack, especially the trunk. This could be burning also due to the pressure. You should also avoid using hot packs on overweight patients as heat dissipation is impaired. The heat could get really concentrated leading to the burn and moisture may encourage damaged or infected skin to break down. There's precautions for cold treatments due to the risk of burns. They're very rare if the treatment is correctly applied. Um, the burns occur due to tissue death, due to prolonged vasoconstriction, ischemia and thrombosis. So that's why you should limit exposure to under 45 minutes to an hour. And there's different methods of applying different treatments that will be mentioned later. So this is moist heat therapy where the heat packs are heated up in the water and they need to be wrapped in six layers and then you can put them on the patient. Just like so. So you do that for 15, 20 minutes and you're asking them how does that feel? So how does that feel? Yeah, it's all right. Not concentrated in one spot? No. Yeah. And you'll give them their bell if they need to contact you. For a cold application, we're using ice in a plastic bag. It also needs to be wrapped in, in towels and you'll place it on the patient for five to 15 minutes, just like so. And you ask, how does that feel? Yeah, good. Not concentrated in one spot? No. And then you'll give them their bell also if they need to contact you.